Hello and welcome to Skillnet Ireland's The Innovation Exchange. My name is Martin Murray. I'm an investment consultant with Dublin Business Innovation Centre. And in this short learning, we're going to talk about defining your business proposition using the Lean Business Canvas. The Lean Business Canvas is a one page business plan. It was developed by Ash Maria based on a previous design by Alex Osterwald, uh, a design called the Business Model Canvas. This Lean Business Canvas is thought to be a little bit more suitable for startup or early stage businesses. So what's the benefit of a one page business plan over the more traditional 20, 40 or 60 page business plan that obviously could have a lot more detail in it? Well, the Lean Business Canvas as a one page business plan is shorter, obviously. That makes it very suitable for brainstorming and for generating ideas between you and your uh, team in the company. And it also means that it can be used iteratively. So lots of founders of startup businesses will have a collection of Lean Businesses canvases that have developed over time as their ideas around their business developed. Uh, so it's used for idea generation and also for communicating what your business is all about. So let's take a look at the Lean Business Canvas. Uh, you can see that there's nine different sections to it and they are numbered in approximately the order that you might fill in those sections, although that's not mandatory. You can make your own decision on that. So let's take a look at each of those nine sections. Firstly, we should be able to define the problem that we are solving. Very importantly, try to think about this problem from the perspective of your customer. It may be the case that you have multiple customers or a number of people in your value chain, and you have to think about the problems that you are solving for each of them. In some cases, it might be best to do a different lean business canvas for each one of those audiences. Try to state those problems succinctly in a manner that is meaningful to those customers. And while we're doing that, let's think about the second section here, the, the customer segments. Who are your target customers? Now, sometimes entrepreneurs suffer from the idea that absolutely everybody in the world will want their product. But usually it works much better if you can define more closely exactly who your customer is and what is the particular characteristics of those customers that makes them most targetable for your product and your business. Next, we look at the unique value proposition. Is there a single, clear, compelling message that states why you are different and worth buying? If you're a startup business, it's very difficult to compete against the incumbents who perhaps are well-funded, um, unless you have something that is different about what you are doing. And in thinking about this, think of all of the different aspects of your solution that might be brought to bear in bringing you uniqueness. We then look at the solution. Uh, and this is an area that founders and entrepreneurs usually have no difficulty talking about. You may have spent years already developing your solution and you're very familiar with it. Indeed, you might be in love with it. And that can be a problem because if you are so focused on your solution, well, then maybe you're not so focused on the customers and the problem that you should be solving for them. We sometimes say that the solution area is where invention happens, but it is over the whole of the Lean Business Canvas that innovation happens. And it is innovation that you want to bring to the marketplace rather than just an invention that you think is wonderful.
The fifth area we're looking at here is unfair advantage or sometimes called competitive advantage. Is there something that you are doing that can't be easily copied? That might be with the core product that your solution is bigger, stronger, faster than what's on the marketplace at the moment. But often that unfair advantage is found in other areas here on the Lean Business Canvas, such as your channels or your route to market or your pricing mechanisms, uh, which maybe the um, existing incumbent competitors may not wish to follow. So think about all of the areas where you might be able to have an advantage over the competition. Uh, the sixth area we're looking at is revenue streams. How are you going to make money? What is your revenue model? What's the lifetime value of your customers? What's the revenue that you will derive from them? And what sort of margins can you generate on that business? Again, perhaps this is an area where you can generate real competitive advantage by having a larger gross margin than your competitors, for example, or by bringing a different pricing model or revenue model to the marketplace where the competitors look for payment up front. Yours is a software as a service subscription model, for example. The seventh category we're looking at here is the cost structure. Uh, so what are the, uh, how are you going to acquire customers and what is the cost associating with acquiring those customers and distributing your product or service to those customers? Perhaps there's hosting costs and usually there will be substantial people costs. Very importantly, your cost structure has to be aligned with the rest of the business. If you're saying that you're going to be a low cost provider and therefore be able to offer your goods or services at a lower price, well, then you also need to have a lower cost structure to match that. So you're looking for alignment between all of the areas here on the Lean Business Canvas. Number eight, key metrics. How will you measure the success of your business? What does success look like? How will you know as you go through the first year of your business, the second year of your business, if you are on track and actually achieving what you want to achieve? The fewer and clearer and more measurable these metrics can be, the better. Number nine is uh, one that's often overlooked and can be very, very important to the success of your business and to achieving that unfair advantage, and that is your channel to the market. Um, how are you going to uh, go to customers? Um, is it uh, by knocking on doors or is it by setting up a bricks and mortar retail shop? Or is it by putting your goods or services online and having uh, customers procure them and use them that way? If you're bringing a new innovation um, in this area in terms of how the customers receive your, your goods or services, that can be a difficult innovation for the competition to follow and a very good way of building competitive advantage. So if you fill out the Lean Business Canvas, uh, it's possible to do it in a very short time, you know, maybe 20 minutes or 30 minutes for the first iteration. You can do it along with a team in your company or you may choose to do it separately and then put all your ideas together. And then, as we've said before, you can iterate on those ideas in order to really hone your business proposition and come up with something really compelling that works for customers, for partners and for investors. Finally, if you do a quick search online for Lean Business Canvas examples, you'll find lots of examples associated with very well-known businesses. Now, these um, examples may not be actual plans that were made by those companies in the early days, uh, but they still serve as very good examples as to how you can use the Lean Business Canvas to define your problem, your customers, the solution you're bringing to market, the unique value proposition and the unfair advantage you have, and your key metrics, your channel to market, the cost structures, and the revenue streams associated with your business. Best of luck with your use of the Lean Business Canvas.
Please ensure you complete the other refresher modules as advised by your SME consultant, or indeed any other refreshers available that are of interest to you. If you have any queries on the content of the module, please contact your assigned SME consultant. For any program queries, please contact the Innovation Exchange at dublinbic.ie.